Howdy. Oh, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How you doing, everybody? How are you doing? Will, most importantly, how are you? Do you know the smell of like... Oh, God. No, no, no. <laughs> like when you saw into wood with an electric saw. Yeah. I smelt that like as I sat down just now. Like, were you doing shop work in this room? <laughs> yes. You were. You actually yes. were. Yes. So well, there's two two possibilities. Okay. One, you finally smelled this beautiful table that we have between us. I mean, it's been here a while. It yeah. does smell like brand new yeah. wood. But I got a 3D printer. That's what that is. It kind of smells like hot glue, though. Okay. Not so much. I don't know why I smelled wood. I don't know. But I made some things. I, uh, I left them here. Uh, I made a little frog guy. Nice, because it was it came preloaded yeah. on the thing. I made a whistle. Oh, it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't finish the print all the way, but it yeah. it worked. Yeah, this is the I'm first sure, thing I'm I sure made. Zim's ears are bleeding. Oh right yes, now. and I made naked Zelda. I was gonna say her her bosoms are ample. Yes, for an anime girl, that's supposed to be twice as big, so it'd be more detailed. <laughs> well, okay. This was the first thing that came up when I searched Zelda on a 3D printing website. I should I should be surprised, but I'm not. Right, right. So what you might be smelling is the... Okay, the 3D printing. Yeah, it smells like hot glue, kind okay. of. And I ran out of stuff because yeah. I spent all of the stuff calibrating it. Right. And I just got a shipment just now. There you go. And I found you could do like lens caps and like body caps. Yeah, you stuff can do like a lot. That. You know you can do guns <laughs> <laughs> yes you get like a shot off and then they and then they fall apart yeah uh there was so, oh there was another thing i wanted to show you i want to you you're a transformers guy yes uh hold on i do enjoy my g1 transformers. i found this the other day and you gotta see this i want to get this okay it's 150 dollars Oh yeah, I've seen those. I've... It's a freaking basically a version of my camera. Yeah, but it turns into it out turns out this I've I tried to get those. That is awesome. Like, nobody I know like has access to them. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, they're all like, these are like weird off brand websites. Yeah, you got to go to like import uh, sites. You got to go to, like Japan and stuff. I think Big Bad Toy Store had them. But I think they sold out mm. because that, you know, that's an American company. So they can right. get it for okay, easily. Okay, so it's a Japanese thing. Yeah. Okay. All the good Transformers are Japanese things. Mm. There was a Megatron that turned into a Sega Genesis only in Japan. Oh, that's cool. I know, right? Uh, Dad says, wood smells. Buy that Aussie some right guard. Yeah. I get it. He smells lovely. He smells <laughs> great. Uh, hey, thank you to Spankwise for the 18 months. All the love. George McFarlane for the 23 months. I Pokemon slept through that Pokemon Presents. <laughs> Got and, him. And Timmy Two Shoes with the 10 months and Jay Cannon with the 23 months. Notice me, Senpai. I always notice you. Uh, wait, what's the link? I need the link. Just Google Canon R5 Optimus Prime. Yeah. <laughs> There's another one too. It's a Decepticon, but I I, I don't forgot what, which Decepticon. Do you know what? Is it a camera? Yeah, it's, it it turns into the same camera, but instead of Optimus Prime, it's a Decepticon. Uh, Transformer. I just see. Oh, who the hell's that? Yeah, right. He's not one of the main ones. R Refractor. Is that a guy? Sure. Tommy Refractor. Well, Tommy, Transformers Takara Tommy Refractor. Takara Tommy is the the Japanese company that makes Transformers. Uh, all yeah. right, all right, chat. What Transformer we got? Come here? on, nerds. Who, tell is, me who out. is this guy? Is that just Megatron? That's not Megatron. That's not trans. No, it's not Megatron. Kind of looks like Megatron. Can't hear you. Unmute us, then. Yeah. You idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I assume Megatron, but I don't know. Galvatron? Isn't that no, the no. same guy? It, Galvatron is just different Megatron. Different Megatron. Um, it just says no. Decepticon. No, he's got a specific name, but... Oh, man, maybe... It's, maybe. Oh, yeah, no, it's Refractor. Okay. So, like, who, uh, who gives a shit, Transformer? <laughs> like, it's not Soundwave. It's not Starscream. It's not Shockwave. Yeah, I don't want him, but I do yeah. want the uh, Optimus. No, yeah, the Optimus is front. sick. It is still on Big Bad Toy Store for 150 bucks. Apparently, it comes out this month. 
Oh, it's not even out yet? No, it's just, oh. pre, it's just pre-order. Okay. Which is I, weird, because like, this came out, the news of this came out like in August. I might do that. I might do it. There you go. Uh, Dragon says, did you get a new espresso machine? Yes, I haven't opened it yet. I don't know if I can use it yet. I need a tamper, because it's got a bigger uh, port filter. But uh, I said I would do a stream where I play with it, so I've been holding off on playing with it. You got to get that tamper. Also, I need the tamper, so yeah. I don't know. Uh, it might come in the, there might be a shitty one in the box. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, uh, oh, did you hear the, the, uh, we're burying the lead here. We got yeah. a lot of things to talk about. Yes. We got, uh, uh, Pokemon Presents happens. Yeah. You might not have known that it happened. Yeah. Because no. there wasn't much. Nobody cared. <laughs> uh, there was a state of play last week that we missed. Yes. Uh, some other news. There's some fighting game news that we have to talk yeah. about. Uh, Call of Duty is apparently making a game this year. Mm-hmm. And some other stuff. Uh, but before we get into that, there's two things. One, did you hear about my espresso machine debacle? No. It. I can't keep up with your espresso machine debacle. It shipped. Uh huh. With this address in the in the in the address line. This address. And then our parents' town in the town line. Oh. And it went to their house somehow. Really? Yeah. Because you know, I think that's what happened to my Comic Con ticket. Oh, I, they and instead of like you know leaving it at the post office, they just said not nah, f you. <laughs> oh, they sent it back. They sent it back. Okay, well, they know our parents, so right. I think they just saw the last name and they were like, oh well, they'll figure my it out. name is on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Th- all- this was a big box. It was like un- un- yeah, yeah, yeah. unmistakable. Okay, but what was a little concerning is that the outside of the box says espresso machine. Yeah. And then the top, it says high value product in big cream. <laughs> and I was in Brooklyn when, when yeah. mom called me and I was like, oh, well, that's going to have to sit outside for a little yeah. bit. But it was fun. Anyway. What are we talking about? Oh, other thing we need to get into before we talk about the Pokemon Presents. Uh, free games. Yes. Um. So February, if you don't know this, only has 28 days, which means tomorrow is March, which means you get free games if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus Essentials or Xbox Live Gold. Oh. So PlayStation did things a little differently. I noticed you put a push square.com. Because so Sony announced what the state of what the the games, uh, the PlayStation Plus games are Mm -hmm. for next month, but they did it in the middle of their state of play. Uh, so they didn't do an official blog post for it. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because those games will be available on tu- on Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the month, which is the 7th. So I guess normally they would have put the blog post up tomorrow or whatever. But they announced them during the state of play. Um, and they are Battlefield 2042 for the PlayStation 5. Interesting. Um, that's That's new. Yes. That came out like last year. Minecraft 2021? Oh my god, I thought it was closer. Minecraft Dungeons for the PlayStation 4 and Code Vein for the PlayStation 4. Code Vein is like a... It's an anime Souls-like. Yeah, I've seen this. Uh, Is it Bandai? Yeah, it's Bandai. We we saw this at E3 one year. Uh, I do think it's funny that Battlefield 2042 is in the PlayStation Essentials lineup this month. Not just because the game had a very rough launch... And like people hated it, and now mm-hmm. they're at, they're at the point where like, please, just anybody play this game. But Sony specifically said that they don't want Microsoft to get Call of Duty because that means they're stuck with Battlefield. <laughs> and <laughs> now here they are. Battlefield. Here they are. Yay! Yeah, here Battlefield. Just take it. Here, this just is take this it. This is proof that you know we can't handle <laughs> losing Call of Duty. Is that it? Those are the three games. <laughs> Those are the three. Yeah. What's this? All this at the bottom. Uh, those are games coming to Extra, uh, which is interesting because I did not know the Legacy of Thieves collection, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection, was not included. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, Ghostwire Tokyo, that's pretty cool. So that's coming. Yeah, uh, I have that on Steam. I haven't <laughs> touched it. Uh, Rainbow Six Extraction. Remember that? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's like they really siege, and everyone's like, "Okay, yeah, that's it. That's the last Rainbow Six you're ever gonna get." Uh, it's basically a spinoff. And okay. then games with gold. Games with gold. Uh, wow <laughs> uh hey you get three games this month whoa they're yeah. being really generous yeah. this month it's for so for the entire month of march not only do you get uh truber truber brook truber brook of course it. of course uh right. you also get a sudden strike for the complete collection 
Wow. You know, the fourth entry in the Sudden Strike series. And then from March 16th to April 15th, you get Lamentum. What the hell's Lamentum? I don't know. I don't know what any of these games are. Apparently, there's been four Sudden Strike games. <laughs> and this one, it comes with all five previously released DLC. I hope these developers are getting a lot of money. I hope so, too. Uh, this is very sad. <sighs> and, like, we've talked about it before, how, like, Netflix games has, like, some really good indie titles. Yeah. Like, high, like, high value indie titles. 12 Minutes. Uh, Shredder's Revenge of oxen free you know games like that just available if you have a netflix subscription Mm -hmm. so microsoft has the money they can do that they can get like some of the more high value net uh indie games on there not the random ass ones and i again i feel bad because these might be some you know gems some hidden gems but nobody i've never heard of any of them exactly i've never seen any of them i i I doubt there's some hidden gems in there (laughs) Uh, I'm. I just looked up Amazon Prime just because they sometimes have good stuff. Yeah. Um, and they do have a bunch. Of, they have five free games. Never heard of any of those either. I am fish. Okay. Uh, is it I am fish or I? Yeah, I am fish. Oh, it's like I am bread. Yeah, I am fish. <laughs> uh, Book of Demons, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, which I guess is a big deal to some people. Yeah, I've heard. Of, I've at least heard of Baldur's Gate. Adios. And Faraway 3. Those are free with Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hey, if you have Amazon Prime, you know what else is free? A subscription to the Wolf Den here. Yep. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. Just like Sachi did in the chat. Gifted. He he subscribed with Amazon Prime for six months. Look at that. There you go. And that helps support us. And that helps us keep making episodes. Uh, How come that didn't come through my notifications? Everything sucks. Oh, I have to resubscribe. Look at that. There so you go. See, it reminded him. Yeah. Subscribe free with Prime. There you go. And now I will share it because I want to be read in the chat. <laughs> okay. Oh, there he is. Will hey. Wolf, damn it. Thanks for subscribing for 37 months. If wow. you want to be like me, don't. <laughs> And Pokemon we ran out of hats. Pokemon presents. Yeah, you haven't worn your hat in a while. I I keep losing it. You know? <laughs> like I know where it is, and then I forget where it is. Pokemon presents. Yes. Uh, Pokemon presents a whole lot of nothing. It was twenty five minutes. Did you watch any of it? No. Like I was gonna go back and watch it, but then I saw like people were like disappointed. So so, so we f- not. Don't bother. We filmed the Nintendo podcast on Sunday. Yeah, and uh, then. Th- Pokemon Presents was on Monday. Mm-hmm. There was a little bit of a concern that there'd be something that we would need to talk about because the episode doesn't go out till Thursday. Right. Um, nothing happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we had decided to do like a five minute conversation about it anyway to slot in later. Um, I, I watched the whole thing because of that. Otherwise, yeah. I never would have even given it the time of day. Mm-hmm. But I watched it 25 minutes of them talking so slow repeating themselves over and over again Mm. taking long pauses between words yeah it was very difficult to watch oh boy and there was nothing exciting uh yeah i mean should we just run through yeah all right we'll start with uh scarlet and violet this was this was the last thing they talked about. <laughs> they I guess they think this was the big one. It it is the big one. It it they announced DLC. So every year there's a Pokemon yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Uh with uh Sword and Shield, they took a year and instead worked on DLC yeah. for the main games instead of releasing like a Pokemon gun. Yeah, exactly. It never gets old. So Scarlet and Violet is doing the same thing. They're getting DLC this yes. year, which I think is good. Yeah. It's like a little bit of a break. Yeah. Although, game needs some work. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully this will help a little bit. Uh, Well, fans who have been exploring the Paladia region of Scarlet and Violet have more fun in store now that a pair of new Paradox Pokemon are appearing in the Terra Raid battles. Scarlet players will encounter the Water and Dragon type Pokemon Walking Wake while those playing Violet will find the Grass and Psychic-type Pokemon Iron Leaves. That's a good name for a metal band. <laughs> uh, you can catch these Pokemon in Terra Raid battles now. Scarlet and Violet can now also connect with Pokemon Go, allowing you to send po- uh, postcards from the mobile game to the Switch titles 
Postcard location data will affect the pattern of the pavilion that appear in Scarlet and Violet. Sending postcards also opens up the opportunity to catch roaming from uh, to catch roaming form uh, Gimme Ghoul in Pokemon Go. When Pokemon Home support is added to Scarlet and Violet earlier this year, you will be able to bring the roaming form Gimme Ghoul that you've caught in Go into your Paldean adventure. Gimme Ghoul confuses the hell out of me, and so does this. No, I'm not doing it. Okay. It, it, it seems overly complicated. Yeah. So, which... So, they have, like, a Suicune-type Pokemon that mm-hmm. is now, like, a dinosaur guy. Okay. Is that Walking Wake? I don't... I think that's a different one. I think that... One. I have no idea, honestly. Oh, no, that is Walking Wake. Okay. Is this different than the DLC? I have no idea. That, I think that's just an add-on. The, the true DLC is the next section, which is uh, okay. the hidden treasure of Area Zero, coming in two okay. parts uh, later this year. Part one, the teal mask has you visiting the land of Kitakami on a school trip and will be released in fall of this year. Part two, the Indigo Disc will see you become an exchange student at Blueberry Academy and is slated for winter 2023. During these adventures, you'll encounter some familiar Pokemon that you hadn't seen in Paldea, as well as a newly discovered legendary Pokemon, uh, Ogre Pond and Terrapagos. Nailed it. Uh, You can purchase the version of the hidden treasure of Area Zero that matches your game version now on the eShop. Uh, when you do, you'll get a new uniform set to give your characters some new outfits. As an early purchase bonus, you'll receive a code that allows you to claim a special... Uh, fuck. <laughs> Hisuian... Hisuian... Zoroark. Zoroark. I was going to say Zorak. <laughs> uh, for your in-game team. So, they announced DLC for this year. Yes. A fall 2023. Barely any... Thing from it though yeah you have to wait till fall and winter to play this stuff yeah which is crazy yeah but also they showed nothing they showed literally this picture yeah is all that they showed and they showed like a little bit of a closer up of each pokemon like the like the mask guy and the yeah. other guy and then that's basically it and some 3d renders of what is very clearly not video game footage and it says yeah. not actual game footage um so yeah, yeah, they're doing DLC. We figured that out, but that that's yeah. otherwise it's a whole lot yeah. of nothing. Maybe they're rushed because like don't they always do announcements on that day? It's like Pokemon Day. On the day they did this. Yeah, isn't it? I think they do that like every year is the Yeah, Pokemon but presents. you know, they're Pokemon, they could stand to wait a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they don't have to do that. You're yeah. right. You're right. All right, there's there's more stuff. The every single time there's Pokemon news, everyone expects it to be Pokemon Sleep. Well, we finally got it. We were also treated to a look at the long-awaited Pokemon Sleep, which is coming later this year in the game. You work together with Professor uh, Neroli uh, and Snorlax to research the way Pokemon Sleep. And to do so, all you need to do is get a good night's sleep. By leaving your smartphone by your pillow when you go to bed, your sleep will be measured and analyzed. Uh, Your sleep will be categorized into one of three sleep types and Pokemon that sleep in similar ways will gather around Snorlax. To aid in your research, the new Pokemon Go Plus, the new Pokemon Go Plus Plus accessory can be used with Pokemon Sleep. This handy device operates with a push of a button and it can measure your sleep data when it's placed on your pillow. Um, There's also a Pikachu within the Pokemon Go Plus Plus that can sing lullabies for you. The more sleep you get together, the friendlier this Pikachu will become. You can even unlock new alarm sounds as you as your bond grows. Pokemon Sleep is planned to launch in summer of 2023, and the Pokemon Go Plus Plus is scheduled for release on July 14th. Uh, you'll enjoy waking up each day to see which Pokemon sleep types, sleep styles you can discover. So, I, th- I feel like an older uh, uh, Wolf Den channel would have made a whole video about that little pokeball plus yeah but i don't see that happening i don't see yeah a, a, a reason to go about all that it just seems mm, no i feel like 
I liked the original Pokeball Plus yeah. thing. That was cool. It had integration with Pokemon Let's Go, and you could bring it around, and it was it had a mew in it and gained XP for that. And also Pokemon Go it was cool. I would like to see uh, this in action. Like, I would like to actually see somebody, like, get the Go Plus Plus. I think the pre-orders and, just happened. And download the app and, like, try it out. And okay, you convinced me. I'm not. <laughs> that wasn't saying you had to do it. I'm just saying, like, that interests me because I don't sleep very well. <laughs> I, I, I've been waking up like I like I just got, slept under a boulder, like, for the past year. I ha- I do sleep tracking with my Apple Watch, but the default sleep tracking on the Apple Watch sucks bricks. Mm-hmm. So... I would like something, anything to help me track my sleep properly and learn what I can do to sleep better. The sleep and tracking. Snorlax is going to help me do that. The sleep tracking on on the on the Apple Watch sucks. It's su- like the the default one. What about it sucks? When I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or like deal with my kids, it mm. still thinks I'm sleeping. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't, but it does. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, it looks like you can't get it from Nintendo right now. Uh, really? It just says releasing in January 2023. Best Buy has pre-orders, though. Okay. I'll just leave that in the tab. I'll I mean, decide you, later if I actually want it. You didn't have to get it. I'm just saying. I'm a little curious. I know I'm going to use it like once. Yeah. Gonna... I sleep a lot. <laughs> oh, for a long time. So I'm going to catch a lot of Pokemon. I'm wondering if it's like gonna reward you for sleeping a little bit. Like if you yeah. sleep for like like, <laughs> will you get a shitty Pokemon if you sleep for two hours? Like if you're a power napper. Well, yeah. like you want to catch them all, right? Yeah. So like, oh, tonight I can only sleep for two hours because I want yeah a shiny Pikachu or something. You know, I doubt it'll work like yeah. that. I was saying, why not a fitness band at this point? Yeah, I'm surprised like it's, like a Fitbit or something. Like the the idea of like leaving your phone or this thing on your pillow while you sleep. Mm-hmm. Because part of my problem is I move around a lot while I sleep. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm going to knock the phone over. I'm going to, like, lose the stupid plus plus thing. Right. Um. Yeah, I don't understand why it's not why that's not a wearable. Or, you know, why there isn't an app for the watch Yeah. as well to go along with the app you're going to get for your smartphone. Also, how well is it going to work when there's uh, multiple beings in the bed with you? Yeah, exactly. Like, we got, got me, got Hannah, and got the dog. Yeah. So if dogs can get up, yeah, move so around, I, fuck I, it up for and, me. And if this thing makes noise, I don't want my wife waking up to like catch you. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I think it does. I think oh, it, okay. I think it it has a, it comes with the Pikachu in it. Yeah, and I think it does make noise. It's bad enough my alarm on my phone is still like the the, the submarine warning. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the default, isn't it? No, the default is like something soon like on an iPhone. Yeah, no, mine is. Yeah, no, my, my, mine's, uh, yeah, uh, mine's uh, the intruder alert from Goldmine. Uh, uh, yeah, that's mine too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I want to. Tr- I'm gonna. Tr- I guess I'll try it. I guess I, you can convince me to try. It. Yeah. I don't know if I want to make a whole ass video about it. All right, I mean, you can make a short out of it. I can make a short there out of go. it. See, you convinced me to spend fifty five dollars. Wow, oh, thank God. you so much. Fifty five dollars. Fifty five dollars. That's the original Pokemon Go Plus yeah. was fifty dollars. Well, that was a ball. That yeah. was like a cool ball that you could use in the game. Yeah, yeah, dude. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have trouble sleeping. I have trouble sleeping at the right time, right? But not for lengths. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not sure what this will say about me. What the, what I will learn about myself. Well, a fitness band, though. I feel like I would. That would get me to want to yeah. catch stuff like Pokemon Go. When that came out, got all of us nerds out doing stuff. Yeah. You know, that was a crazy summer when that came well, out. Well, this one is flat. So maybe someone yeah. will create like a watch band on Etsy or something that you can wear on your wrist. Yeah. I'm assuming it has all the same functionality as the other one. Yeah. Uh, that was the Pokemon Go Plus originally was a ball and it was yeah. a pain in the ass to take around with you because you can't yeah. put it in your pocket. This you can put in your pocket. Well, let's let's read about it. The Pokemon Go Plus Plus will also enhance your Pokemon Go game using the device that allows you to automatically spin a Pokestops and throw Pokeballs yeah. at Pokemon without having to pull out your smartphone by linking your Pokemon Go Plus Plus to Pokemon Go, you'll also get access to special research leading to and leading to an encounter with a Snorlax wearing a nightcap. And stay tuned, there are plans to add new features to Pokemon Go that will incorporate the sleep data recorded 
buy the Pokemon Go plus plus device. That's great. Yeah. That, that that it does sound like the original Pokemon Go. Right. Plus. But now with sleep data. Yeah. Uh Rod Coronado in the chat says Pokemon be selling your data. Yeah. Probably. 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 Let them have it. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, I don't what care. are they? Like, Everybody takes our data. Yeah. They're, what are they going to do with... Well, I guess they could break into my house and steal all my stuff. Yeah. Because I'm so asleep. <laughs> They'll know when I'm asleep. True. Remember when Dad wanted to beat up the census guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted... This census one year wanted to know when everybody was out of the house and yeah. working. And he's like, they'll, they'll t- take me to jail. I don't care. I'm never <laughs> answering that. And I was like, you know what? That's a good point, though. Yeah. No one needs to know. When yeah, everyone is out of the house in the house. Business. Anyway. Uh, well, little do they know, I'm totally fine giving a... a the Pokemon Company. The Pokemon Company, a yeah. corporate entity, my all of my uh, lifestyle data. Yeah. But they're cuddly, so it's okay. They're cuddly, and they yeah. give me digital cuddly dopamine rushes. Yeah. Anyway, I was interested in this. Pokemon Concierge. The world of Pokemon animation continues to grow with a new collaborative project between the Pokemon Company and Netflix. Pokemon Concierge is Netflix is a Netflix series that utilizes groundbreaking stop motion animation to tell a new story from within the world of Pokemon. Set at the Pokemon Resort, the series follows Haru, the resort's concierge, and the many Pokemon that visit as guests. More information about the series will re- uh, release will be shared in the future. They barely showed anything. Yeah. What you see here is like basically what we yeah. saw. But I think that's really cool. I yeah. uh I like the idea of the world of Pokemon mm-hmm. and in like TV and movie form we're pretty much locked to like, you know, battles and shit and yeah. like, you know, ash and whatever. And uh this expands it because there's a lot of other stuff going on in the world yeah, of Pokemon this is that literally isn't just Pokemon fighting Pokemon out. Yeah. So. so that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's cool that it's stop motion. Cause like that's yeah, I'm very interested in that. Cause yeah. these days, why not just make it fake stop motion? Yeah, like CGI. And stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, stop motion like takes forever to do. Mm-hmm. It takes like years, and they're doing a whole series. Yeah, and of, it looks. Yeah. I like. I love the way this looks. Yeah, but again, you could fake it very easily. <laughs> not very easily, but you could fake it. Yeah, and it would be a lot quicker. Yeah. So it's interesting that they decided to go with that style. I'm wondering, or like, what the like target demographic is, or what the age demographic. They're always they always shoot really low. Yeah, I'm except sure. for like Pokemon. What was it? Origins? I think it was. Yeah, that was supposedly like a little gritty and shit. Re- oh, really? Yeah. So I uh, I, I don't know how much I would enjoy. I don't this, know. But it Pokemon's looks nice. in a weird spot because like obviously everything's aimed towards kids, mm-hmm. but. A lot of the people who are into it are people our age who grew up with it yeah. back in the 90s. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this next thing is included in that. The Pokemon trading card game classic. Yes. Pokemon- this was very funny because they showed the trailer and it was like an epic Pokemon card yeah. battle between two people. And they looked like they were in their 30s. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pokemon Presents uh, gave Pokemon trading card game fans an exciting glimpse at the upcoming Pokemon trading card game classic a premium Pokemon uh, TCG set created as a joint production uh, by design firm Nendo uh, Creatures and the Pokemon Company. This gorgeous set, currently scheduled for release in 2023, uh, is meant to uh, is meant to last a lifetime. You'll get another peek at it during this year's World Pokemon Championships. They know this is for us 30 year olds, so lifetime they don't really have much. Yeah, they, they they're, they're <laughs> halfway there. At yeah, this point. they don't really need to. Yeah, compensate for too much. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. A lot of people our age are still buying Pokemon cards. Yes. So this is a cool little thing for them. But I feel like they've gone back to the classic cards more than once. They've done it a bunch. They've Probably. re-released I, them yeah, a lot. The, the, like they keep, you know, going back to the original 151 mm-hmm. because that's what everybody remembers. Those are like that's I, what I, I want. Yeah, I would say the, <laughs> the majority of people who are into Pokemon who are our age yeah. want them. They yeah. don't want the like the old the new stuff. So this is just that plus like a cool like play mat and stuff. Yeah. Like it's like a kit that comes with everything. So I don't know. Uh, I, I guess I guess it's cool. And then Pokemon Master EX. So this is the mobile game 
Yes. It's actually pretty good. I played yeah. when it came out. I played a decent amount of it. Okay. It was. It, I I liked it a lot. You, instead of collecting Pokemon, you collect trainers and like one of their Pokemon. So okay. like, uh, and it's th- all different trainers throughout all Pokemon history. So you mm-hmm. can get like Ash, you can get like Misty, and you can get like a, uh, you know, friggin' this guy. That I, I forgot his name already. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. So it's cool. It's a good game. I like yeah. it. Celebrating three and a half years of Pokemon Masters EX with a variety of bonuses and new Masters Sync pairs, the Five Star Championship Select Ticket Scout will be available from Sunday, February 26th uh, at 10 p.m. Pacific to Sunday, April 2nd at uh, 11 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and trainers will receive a Five Star Champion Select Scout ticket at no cost when they log in between Sunday. Did I just read that? Oh, no. Sun- uh, Sunday, February 26th at 10 uh, and March 26th at uh, 11. Um, use the ticket and pick a champion to team up with. You will choose Cynthia, Lance, Al- uh, Alder, Iris, Diantha, or Steven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, there's a lot more be- between like certain time periods. Stuff. So they're, they're adding a lot to Pokemon Masters EX. Pokemon Masters EX is the closest yeah. you will get to having actual Pokemon on your phone. Because okay. you do battles and stuff. Right. Just instead of pulling out Pokemon, you're pulling out the trainers. And you have a right. team of trainers. Okay. So that was like, it seemed like whatever company made Pokemon Masters EX, they were like, let's see how close we can get to having an actual Pokemon game yeah. before they shoot us down. And that's what they did. So I, if you haven't tried it, I think it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Pokemon Unite, which is also a mobile game, but it's like a it's a MOBA and it's like League of Legends and I hate it. It's not good. <laughs> As we enter the second year of Pokemon Unite, legendary Pokemon um, Zykian will be joining the fray with its Unite move, uh, Sovereign Sword. And the ability to charge its sword with Eros energy to unleash a more powerful attack. You can now complete missions in it, the adventure in Zykan's Weld event uh, to receive rewards and obtain uh, Zykan's Unite license. A boss rush event uh, in which you earn rewards by facing off against formidable foes is also underway. Be sure to catch the Pokemon Presents video to discover the gift code for a personal Pokemon Unite in-game item and look forward to the Pokemon Unite Asia Champions League, an invitation-only league that will determine the game's Asia region champions. When I In the video, they pronounced it Z- Zashian. Zashian? Z- Z- Zashian? Something like that. It was a, it was an S sound, like okay. a Zashian. Oh, I guess like C-I is... I, listen, I've been calling him Zashian for... Yeah. for years all right um yeah i'm not into pokemon unite next is pokemon cafe remix which is another game that everybody tells me that i should like because i like coffee (laughs) but i'm not interested i don't think anybody here is interested i think we're gonna skip it okay and then pokemon world championship finally we got a chance to see the new special artwork that has been created to honor the 2023 pokemon world championships uh which are being held august 11th to 13th at the Pacifico Yokohama in Yokohama, Japan, the best Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Pokemon trading card game, Pokemon Go, and Pokemon Unite players will gather here from around the world to compete. Of course, if you're unable to attend the championships in person, you'll be able to catch all the action on our live broadcasts. Bob, try saying Cyan, but in Japanese. Trying, But a Japanese man try trying saying it in English. Cyan would be Cheyenne. Okay. Or so Sheehan. Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> they spent so long showing us this artwork for this stupid Yokohama thing. Yeah. Like they, they, the lead up to it, and then they built it up, and then they showed us, and it's like, okay, uh, cool. <laughs> I, I don't, it's, this means nothing to me. Yeah. Uh, so it was a waste. I think the Pokemon Presents, very lukewarm, very underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, I guess did anybody like this aside from the Pokemon Sleep announcement, <laughs> which is which is crazy that yeah. that's the one that everybody took. Away I know from it. everybody was disappointed because they wanted uh Game Boy games, right? Because because we got Game Boy games in regular old uh regular old Nintendo Switch Online. Mm-hmm. Uh, they thought we were gonna get the Pokemon games finally. Because why would you have Game Boy games and not Pokemon? Well, they and they also teased that uh, the trading card game was coming to 
Game Boy uh, True. Switch Online. So, so I made a bet with Jackson, mm-hmm. me and AU Retriever, who watches sometimes. Uh, AU Retriever bet Jackson. He said five gifted subs if they announce Pokemon games for mm-hmm. for Nintendo Switch Online, and if I win, you have to stream for three hours just your chair. You can't be on the stream. Uh, and then I said, double it. I'm, I'm in this bet because yeah. I didn't think they were going to have Pokemon games either. And guess what? They didn't yeah, have they Pokemon games. So now don't let him forget that he has to stream his chair for three hours because he seems to be avoiding it. Um, also, uh, the, the, we've talked about this on the show before. They leaked like, remember Sloop? Remember yeah. when Sloop yeah, leaked? Yeah. That was the name, the internal name for the Game Boy emulator on Nintendo Switch Online. And they had a bunch of games that they tested with it and that mm-hmm. were in like a list. And all of those games have been released or are in or in or or were announced to be released in the yeah. future. So uh Pokemon was not on that list. There was some like Pokemon trading yeah. game thing. Yeah, Pokemon trading card game. No, there was a different one, I think. Oh really? It was like a weird like a not an actual game. Yeah. I forgot, but uh, nothing in the data mine says that Pokemon's going to happen. If I think Pokemon, if it happens at all, it'll be its own app. Okay. These games, you can still buy red, blue, and and yellow, uh, and crystal and gold on your 3ds for now. If you if you if you put money on your eShop on yeah. your Switch. And then transfer it over to your 3DS, which yeah. is a pain in the ass, and you're always going to have a little bit of money left over. Yeah. And then you can buy those games for, I think, $10 each, which is a lot if yeah. you put them together. And you can only do that for the next week or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people are speculating maybe when those go away, they'll have a way to do I don't think so. I, th- no, I, I think, think they're going to take their time. It, it took them forever to get Game Boy games on the Switch by itself yeah and it's probably gonna take them a long time to get pokemon games on there as well yeah i still think they're gonna have individual apps because they could easily sell them for more than 10 bucks i mean they could but i can also see them putting them on you know switch online that's I think gonna... the, only, the thing that's gonna be weird is trading but well that's... that works supposedly yeah supposedly well but we know that the um link cable works mm-hmm. so uh people have put the the pokemon roms on the emulator and have done successfully link right. traded so okay. it does work because all it is is when you play with somebody on nintendo switch online yeah you have your game boy they have their game boy and it acts like there's a link cable between yeah. you so it, so it works perfectly fine uh but it wasn't developed with that in mind it was developed just to have a link cable like yeah. just to do other stuff so i'm not positive that we're going to get Pokemon on the Nintendo Switch Online, but I, I'm pretty sure we'll get it in some capacity on Switch at some point. Anyway. Where are we? That's uh, the Pokemon Presents. How you feeling about it? Jake the Bad Snake uh, resubbed saying, really sad that we couldn't get the OG Pokemon games on Switch, but it may come in the near future. Game Freaks are sitting on so much money for so little effort. Yeah. Um, is that a Game Freak decision or is that a Nintendo decision? I think it is a Pokemon Company and Nintendo decision. Okay. I think that Pokemon Company and Nintendo both know they can make a lot of money on just the Pokemon games. Right. And I think Pokemon Company is going to be like, we know our worth. Yeah. You know? Uh, just a pile of nope. Thanks for the 11 months. Thanks, Wolf Bros. No Thank problem. You. FCS Gamer. Thanks for the eight months. Oh, wow. I'm late for the free resub. You did. Oh. You did it. You did it. Congratulations. Heart C- CWM, thanks for the prime. Cheese Nutton, <laughs> thanks for the prime. JR Moser, thanks for the six months. Why was there no Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games? We just told you. Yeah, because they hate you. Just you. Uh, Leo's Mid says they have to release them with Pokemon Stadium, right? It has the Game Boy Tower. Oh, that's right. Isn't Pokemon Stadium on N64? We're coming to N64? I don't think it's coming. I don't think they announced it's coming, did they? Somebody correct me. I'm going to correct you. Because I want to know. When is I... Pokemon Stadium coming to Nintendo Switch Online? But it is coming. It's in the pipeline. I don't know. I could have sworn it was. 
these articles are so annoying. First of all, what is Pokemon Stadium? I know what it is. Uh, why can't Nintendo just give me the list? Here we the, go. The year earmarked for the arrival of Pokemon Stadium is 2023. Okay. Yeah, Pokemon. Well, Pokemon Puzzle League and Pokemon Snap is there. Is there? Leo's mid said they announced Stadium in the direct. Okay. It was announced before December. Yeah. Right, but, and that coming soon. But then they would need to have some sort of... Yes, because we talked about this. Cause the we whole, did talk about the this. The whole exciting thing about Pokemon Stadium was you import your Pokemon from your Game Boy game. And then if you don't have them, then you're stuck playing with dittos <laughs> that transform into the other Pokemon. So how is a transfer pack going to work? Exactly. They have to emulate it. That's Because that's two separate apps. Yeah. That's going to be very confusing. Yeah. I don't know how that works. Well, I think there's a there's a Game Boy emulator in Pokemon Stadium that yes. only reads Pokemon games. Yes. So it would have to it would then, have to read your whole save file for the Game Boy games on Nintendo Switch Online yeah. app. Yeah. And scan it for straight up Pokemon. Yeah. What a nightmare. Yeah. I mean they could do it. Yeah. But it would it would suck. I don't know. I don't know. I have a little faith. Yeah. I have a little faith in them that they'll be able to do that. Speaking of Nintendo Switch Online, I've been playing a lot of win back. Oh yeah? It is awesome. Right? It's very it's good. Yeah. I I I think it goes higher in the tier list than we put it. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. I gotta get back on that. So I I did a stream where I played that and uh and, and I played that I've been playing that like sitting in bed playing yeah. that game. <laughs> I got every game at my fingertips on the switch and i i I'm, I'm i decide i want to play back. win back uh i'm going to the tier list that we did last week okay uh because i remember saying like i've always maintained like it's got its flaws but there's like a nice like charm to it and had it just you know if they could tweak the controls and like some of the gameplay elements it could be a modern day classic but it's held back by the system itself. the controls take a little bit of getting used right to, for sure but uh, it feels like Time Crisis, but on a console. Right. Because there's a lot of cover yeah. mechanic shit. And it's great. Yeah. It feels really good. Um, I would put it at the top of C instead of where it's at. Okay. It's that much more yeah. fun to play. Um, I am curious to see how different the PlayStation 2 version is, which I have. I've never played it. I also played the first world of Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. Game sucks. <laughs> like, it's really bad. Yeah. Uh, that goes somewhere in the middle of d tier wow yeah that's it's not a good but game. that's the game that got nick offerman addicted to video games it was oh it's horrible are you saying that nick offerman has bad taste in video games? nick offerman needs to revisit video games <laughs> maybe get re-addicted yeah i was not impressed at all and it made me think like if i jumped into mario 64 for the first time right now would i be just as disappointed maybe it is like a lot of platformers of that age were like not easy to like wrap your head around. Yeah. Like, cause they, they tried to do the big open world stuff. Yeah. And instead of just, cause at least in Mario 64, like it had the big open world, but then you go to a level, you know, a lot of the platformers of that era, well, especially the rare ones didn't really do that. Well, Banjo Kazooie does have basically the same idea of you jump into a painting. So yeah. it's not a painting. It's like a door. Right. Um, and it's got the same idea as the stars. With the puzzle pieces, right. except you the collect jiggies. the jiggies. Except when you collect one, you stay in the world. Right. Uh, it's just mechanically not very fun. Mm -hmm. It's just not very fluid, and 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 it's very very bizarre. And uh, also, you have to learn each move. Like you have to talk to the mole guy to like learn okay. every move. Oh, so you're not sucks. given every move right yeah. off the bat. And like if you know. Like how to do something, mm -hmm. you can't do it. The button doesn't work until you talk to the mole guy. It's very annoying. Mm -hmm. Uh, not a fan at all. Okay. Anyway, oh, also it's like ugly, <laughs> and um, sounds horrible. Like every everything about yeah. it was just a bad. I time. wonder if um, you've never played the 360 version of Banjo Kazooie. Mm -hmm. Because like that, that's one. That's like a perfect dark situation where they updated the visuals and the controls. I feel like even Banjo Tooie, people were saying Banjo Tooie is the better one. Yeah. So, so maybe we we'll just play that. Maybe. 
Uh, I did see Rare Replay is on sale right now for like seven fifty. Okay. And uh, you can get it if you get it digitally. You also get Golden Eye. So somebody's going to be buying Rare Replay tonight. Oh Rare yeah, Replay. I should do that too. Yeah. Does that come with Perfect Dark? It does. It comes with um, both Perfect Darks, the good one and the bad one. Which one's the good one? The, the original. Oh, it comes with the uh, Xbox 360 one? Yeah. Oh, my God. We have that. Yeah, I know. I don't like it. I've never played it. It's I've always not, wanted to play it. Not great. <laughs> I want to play it. I might go get around to it. There you go. Does it work on Game Pass? Like streaming? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to play that. Yeah. Um. Okay. There's more announcements that happened yes, last week. Yes, Sony State of Play. Uh, everything that was announced, starting with Rocksteady shares an extended look at Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Does this make you feel better or worse about ju- kill- Worse. <laughs> yeah, it, it, every time I saw this, yeah. this game, uh, I was wondering where you were getting, uh, uh, Sunset Overdrive from until I saw this trailer and I was like, that whole thing was Sunset yeah. Overdrive. <laughs> Uh, it's it gets a little worse. Uh, we got our biggest look yet at so Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, which showed off the game's combat, RPG, and live service elements. There you go. <laughs> uh, we saw gameplay of Harley Quinn, King Shark, Captain Boomerang, and Deadshot as they romp around Metrop- uh, Metropolis, destroying all enemies in sight. Rocksteady also talked about the post-launch support, including a cosmetic battle pass, gear score mechanics, and upgradable weapons. This game is basically everything I don't like about modern video games. It's it's always online, even if it's single player. You have to be connected to the internet. Yep. Um, it's all about the numbers. You got to get, you got to upgrade these numbers and these numbers and these numbers. But these numbers are different from these numbers, and these numbers are better than these numbers. But you still got to upgrade it, these numbers. It sounds a lot like uh, Avengers. Yeah, it, it's it's the destinyification of games that don't need to be destiny. Is yeah. what this is. Yeah, this could have been a fun. Um, one to four player um shooter game that has like crazy platforming elements to it but instead it's trying to turn into destiny yeah which makes which automatically turns me off to it which sucks because i would have played this but now i'm not i'm dreading it this is you know the same thing as the reason why like i'm holding back on get on upgrading to uh gotham knights the same shit yeah I, I'm not interested in this at all. I, I'm interested in the story. It looks yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, the story looks fun. Rocksteady oh. can, can tell a good story. Oh, they spent a long time. Uh, we've seen a lot of previews with the Flash, yeah. like an evil Flash. Yeah. If Flash is evil and like controlled by Brainiac, he would just kill everybody. I know. Like, Why does... Like, that's... Well, I'm I, not able to suspend my disbelief. Superman. Brainiac also yeah. has control of <laughs> Superman. Yeah. <laughs> so... Why is he keeping everyone yeah, yeah. alive? Just that's the end of it. Well, him. Brainiac, his whole thing is like he's a researcher. Okay. So like he'll like he goes from planet to planet, absorbs all the information that he can, saves a little piece of it for mm-hmm. his little zoo or whatever, and then destroys the planet. So he's probably keeping the Justice League, you know, making the Justice League keep some people alive just to like for research. So he's researching how well the Suicide Squad is gonna, yeah, get him. I guess <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. I feel like a pr- Suicide Squad works best, like not with big intergalactic threats or yeah. big interdimensional. The par- part of the reason why the first Suicide Squad movie wasn't very good is because they're going up against magic, mm-hmm. and that's not the Suicide Squad's forte. The second movie was great because they did guerrilla warfare shit. That's yeah. the Suicide Squad. Yes, they also fought Starro at the end, but that was like the climax to something that was steadily building right you know they, they didn't just immediately go for the aliens right so i would like to be interested but i'm not at yeah all. it's it's, it's I'm re, I'm su- it, it's a what you said it, it's what makes me burnt out on triple a stuff all distilled yeah. into one game and this game has been in development for like eight years yeah. supposedly i've seen uh i was after this i saw a lot of people shitting all over it on twitter yeah Captain Boomerang with his big ass gun. Yeah. <laughs> it, it honestly, it makes me scared for the Wonder Woman game Monolith is making. Because mm-hmm. that, you know, everyone just assumes it's Shadow Mordor, but with Wonder Woman. Yeah. That, that's fine. That makes sense. That's a perfectly good game for Wonder Woman. But if they keep doing all this live service nonsense, yeah. I don't want to play that. So that was also something I saw on Twitter how uh, Warner Brothers patented the Nemesis system and then never used it again. Yeah. Everyone was like, no, they're using it in Wonder Woman. Yeah. So. Are they? Or are they 
now they're going to do this bullshit. Uh, maybe both. Uh, the next Capcom reveals three new Street Fighter characters, and one of them is Cammy. Yes, uh, Zangief, Lily, and Cammy have all been confirmed for Street Fighter Six. Each character got a gre- be- uh, got a brief gameplay showcase displaying their unique fighting styles. Cammy got the biggest makeover coming into Street Fighter Six with new hairstyle and jacket. Lily joins and the pants cast- and pants. Yes, old people are mad about the fact she's wearing <laughs> pants. Uh, Lily joins the cast as a newcomer to the series. I would like to give this game a try. I hope there's a demo or something. I think there is going to be a demo. It yeah, does look nice. very good for yeah yeah for well, a long running series like this. It's a PS5 exclusive, right? Or I don't think so. No, I don't think this is the last one was for oh. a minute. Uh, Street Fighter Five was because Sony helped fund it. Okay. Yeah, they weren't going to do Street Fighter Five until Sony's like, "Hey, we'll give you some money." But I'm pretty sure this is coming everywhere i'm interested because this is running on the uh resident evil engine yes so i'm curious how that's gonna work and you could do like game. custom characters and they look bizarre as hell yeah and there's like a 3d like hub world yeah thing. and also like the resident evil games like have a more like realistic art style mm. and street fighter doesn't it's mm-hmm. very cartoony so um this is coming to everything yeah yeah maybe i'll try it on pc cool uh baldur's gate 3 launches october 31st uh sorry august 31st got a lengthy trailer for the upcoming baldur's gate 3 along with a release date uh the trailer showed off uh various classes shots of the multiplayer and combat the game is set for release on ps5 and pc uh and we have news about the xbox one version later in the episode uh that is um baldur's gate is like dungeons it's just dungeons and dragons isn't it yeah. okay so for all you nerds out there <laughs> nerds don't watch this show though i've been playing uh i've been playing i played an hour last night this game called demio which is a psvr game okay. uh it is dungeons and dragons okay um it's a tabletop game yeah uh where you have little pieces and you move them around but the pieces are like animated because okay. you're in vr cool. and if you play with somebody you see their like head and like yeah, yeah, arms yeah. moving around you can like strategize with them and stuff it's pretty fucking cool really yeah i'm i'm nice. I'm, I'm into it nice very cool so i'm a nerd now yeah that's what oh, I'm saying. sorry to hear that <laughs> new resident Evil 4 trailer what do you think tell me uh, okay it was fine we got a, we got another look at the capcom's upcoming resident Evil 4 remake which confirmed the presence of the mercenaries mode which is the classic feature from the original game it also gave us our first look at boss fights against jack krauser and leon heading through the minecart section we also learned a special demo of the game is on the way. Oh, so good. I'm good. I can play this demo and see exactly how they've ruined my boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if this game wasn't called Resident Evil 4, I think I would be excited for it. Resident yeah. Evil 4 2. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, or something like that. Like it's just it was so it was so perfect as, yeah. like, as it was. I saw not to get too off topic, but it's along the same lines. Um this Peter did Disney's Peter Pan, the animated movie, one of my favorite Disney movies. Uh, they okay. released the live action trailer for the live action remake of it. Hate everything. I want to burn <laughs> the world down. Uh, Wendy's father is played by Alan Tudyk, while Captain Hook is played by Jude Law. If you know anything about your Peter Pan mythology, which I know you do, mm-hmm. of course, <laughs> Captain Hook and Wendy's father are always played by the same person. Every single performance of Peter Pan, be it on stage, in movies, in animation, always. Wendy's father and Captain Hook are always played by the same version, by the same actor. Not this time, apparently. Don't know why. That's very stupid. I'm sure Jude Law can play a nice dad. (laughs) That's very stupid. Yeah. Um, um, Yeah, so good thing there's a demo coming. I hope the demo comes out before the game comes out. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes they won't do that. Sometimes they'll release the demo on the day or after the game comes out yeah that's super annoying. i hate when they do that but yeah. the uh resident evil 2 and 3 remake they release demos before the game comes out playstation's been pretty good with demos yeah i mean they, they, this game's coming out in march so hopefully they put out that demo soon that is very soon yes yeah oh yeah that's yes yeah, yeah that's i don't want to i don't want to like i'm gonna just buy the game but i don't want to just blind buy the game i want to know what i'm getting myself into right 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 bungie reveals destiny 2 lightfall 
we don't need to talk about no. this. No. The game that ruins... If you're into Destiny, you will... The game want. that ruins all of Warner Brothers DC games. If you're into Destiny, you will know everything yeah. about this already. Uh, Sony reveals five games headed to PSVR 2 this year. Um, the first game shown was The Foglands, a haunted first-person shooter showing off com- uh, combat against skeletons, spiders, and more. Uh, we also got a look at a VR survival game called Green Hell. Good misfit song. Um, which showed the player uh, creating tents, bows, and other tools to survive a harsh rainforest environment. Uh, up next was the fast-paced first-person shooter with some telekinesis powers called Synapse. The game takes place in a black-and-white world with uh, the only color seemingly coming from your character's powers. Then we saw a sci-fi stealth, uh, stealth game based on the iconic Foundation series by Isaac Asimov. Uh, titled Journey to Foundation, it showed shooting and stealthing around the a space station the last game shown was Before Your Eyes, a colorful interactive adventure about memories where every time you blink, you jump forward in time. Okay, I saw that and I didn't see anything that I thought was interesting. Yeah. But uh, they sounded interesting. They sounded interesting, <laughs> sure. I watched through it because I was like, I need some VR games to play and there was nothing that yeah. was really interesting. I don't know. I feel like VR is just a very hard thing to like demo. Yes. Actually play it. You'd be correct yes now one game that i actually did try on playstation vr is humanity made by tetris effect developers okay this game is a very cool concept not a vr game i don't know (laughs) i don't know if they just didn't release the demo in vr yeah but it says it's vr and it says it's coming to playstation vr too the fucking game uh is in a 16 by 9 window in front of you and you need the dual sense controller you can't use the okay. the the two the you, motion controllers the motion controllers yeah. because the controller the motion controllers um they split the face buttons okay so square and circle square and something is in the left okay and x and circle is on the right i think okay so you need your th- you need to reach your thumb over the other side. It's, it's, it's stupid. Right. So I don't know who thinks this is a VR game, but it's yeah. not. At least not now. Yeah. They got to do some work. Okay. But it's a cool concept. It's just a puzzle game. Yeah. Um, I wasn't uh, I wasn't a fan because okay. of the, because I was trying it in VR. I got yeah. it specifically because I wanted this looked interesting and I wanted some VR games to try. It. And, and it's it's not it's not VR. Right. Uh, well, that was the game. They that was the next. <laughs> yes. Thing. Okay, um, Ticha launching on PlayStation Plus Extra this month. Um, am I even saying that right? Ticha is an upcoming Wind Waker like explor- exploration game from Awake Uh Definitely nailing this. And we learned that it's launching uh, in PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium tiers on March 21st. For more on this game, the developers shared an official gameplay overview last weekend at IGN Fan Fest. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Yeah, these are all like the weird stuff. Um, Goodbye Volcano High coming to PS5 and PS4 June 15th. Naruto X Baruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connection gets uh, a new trailer. A new trailer for Digital Extreme and Airship Syndicate's Wayfinder. And that's it. Wow. Cool. A Wayfinder was apparently... Is this the one that is um, the guy who did Darksiders? Joe Matarita? Yeah, I think he did this game. It looks like it. And that's the big deal about this game. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, generic. Yeah, it, it looks like someone sat down, started drawing, and never stopped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of great stuff. There hasn't... Sony's very bad at doing announcements. No, yeah. Like, they'll do, like, one really good state of play, and then just, like, a lot of bad ones. <laughs> a lot of crap, yeah. I feel like this would have been a good one if Suicide Squad wasn't disappointing. Um, yeah. And, yeah. like, they've shown re- something about Resident Evil 4 in, like, every state of play. Like, we get it. People are excited. I People know. Excited but, that. like, what else can you show about a remake of a game from, like, 20 years ago? Yeah. You know? Uh, T-Man Mag, thanks for the raid. And Cal Moon, thanks for the 44 months. A hey, And John McCheese, thanks for the three months. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's talk about the Evo lineup. I'm moving it. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. Because I'm interested in the Evo lineup. Yeah. This I'm was... assuming 
no smash. Did no. we talk about yeah, there's no smash. There this was announced uh during last week's show. We we didn't get to it because we were too busy talking about uh retro games. But uh Evolution Championship Series, also known as Evo, the largest and longest running fighting game tournament, um uh, announced tonight it will return to Las Vegas Dad at the Mandalay <laughs> Bay Resort and Casino for the second consecutive year with an exciting slate of both new and returning fighting games, as well as select finals once again being held at the Michelob Ultra Arena. Uh, Street Fighter VI will be making its Evo debut this year after its launch this summer. The eight fighting games that will be featured at Evo on August 4th to the 6th, 2023, are Street Fighter VI, played on PlayStation 5, Guilty Gear Strive PS4, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate PS4, Tekken 7 PS4, King of Fighters 15 PS4, Melty Blood Type Lumina PS4, Dragon Ball Fighter Z PS4, and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 PlayStation 4. I, th- I think Ultimate Mar- vs. Capcom, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was the biggest like whoa. Yeah. In this, uh, I'm a little interested in Guilty Gear Strive. I bought it and never touched it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't really care about. It. Any anything else? Uh, I mean, Mortal Kombat 11 is a very good game. I actually do enjoy Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I think that's a fun game. Yeah, no, I think all of these games are fantastic yeah. games. I, I've seen Melty Blood type Lumina, believe it or not, and it does <laughs> look pretty not. cool. It just sounds fun. Uh, there's apparently a whole series of Melty Blood games. It's not just one, and they all have wacky names. That doesn't surprise me. There's like there's a lot. Yeah. Yep. Uh we got Melty Blood type Lumina. Melty Blood Actress Again current code. <laughs> Melty Blood Actress Again. Melty Blood Act Cadenza and Melty Blood. Okay. Okay. Of course. Uh what do I want to say? Uh did, have you been have you seen what's going on with Mortal Kombat eleven? That there, there there's a there's a tournament. There was a tournament where like uh it was like an online tournament and anybody could could enter it and no, uh, I didn't see that. there's like you know there's like professional mortal Kombat 11 players yeah and there's a guy who was just fucking up everybody yeah he played random characters okay so he didn't have a set guy he was just flipping he didn't through have everybody. a main as no say. and he his name was uh his name was like 11 is free or something like 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 arena is free arena like, is they free. literally just came up on my twitter feed <laughs> oh that's it yeah arena is free yeah and uh he was just fucking up everybody and then he would hyper teabag which yeah which I, is like super quick tea yeah uh and apparently in that game you can have mercy like after you beat somebody yeah and they come back he would do that over and over again okay. so he was destroying people <laughs> <laughs> so nice that's I, I i i hope he makes it to evo that'd be fun i i if he does i hope he's like just wears a mask the whole time so nobody yeah. knows who he is yeah nobody knows who he is yeah. right now he's like a i i mean i think people know who he is he just uh he's not like a normal he hasn't been like a guy in the scene right you know? he's like a brand new guy he comes out and it's ed boon <laughs> he's, he's just like i don't just make the game I am the fucking best at it. I think he could be hacking because Probably. because it's an online tournament. Yeah. Bro. Anyway, I'm upset that there's no Smash Brothers because that's all that I really. Um, that's what I would watch. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like you know Nintendo. I think is done with Evo at least for now. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. There's a lot. Of, I think beyond. So remember, we read about the whole Panda Global versus Beyond the Summit thing. Yeah. Be- Panda Global is basically done because of yeah. that whole controversy, and Beyond the Summit is shutting down. Yeah. So, uh, Smash Esports is not doing too good either. Nope. And AJ just told me today, MK Leo, the best Smash player in the world, mm-hmm. just got dropped from his uh uh from his company, his org. Right. And uh, T uh, what the hell's his name? Tweak, the third best in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, or second best, just got dropped. So oh, yeah. um, it's not looking good for Smash Esports right now. Oh. Anyway, uh, moving on. Mor- Speaking of Mortal Kombat, 
Mortal Kombat 12 gets announced in the worst possible way. What happened? Uh, Mortal Kombat 12 has been confirmed to be in development and is slated for a release this year uh, after being announced in an investor's call. Oh, that's annoying. A uh, few things are quite as thrilling as a fierce and bloody battle to the death, which has been the series' strongest suit for over 30 years. It seems that the message has been lost on the publisher, though. Mortal Kombat 12's unveiling comes without a trailer and complete radio silence from the brand's usual social media accounts. Despite the lackluster announcement, it's sure to be one of the bigger upcoming games in the genre to look forward to. Four years after the series' previous entry launch, Mortal Kombat 12 was made official in the Warner Brothers Discovery fourth quarter 2022 earnings call on Twitter. Uh, it's hardly the flawless victory uh, the writer expected, especially given how other franchises in the fighting game community have made their uh, character reveal stages and gameplay mechanics a big part of the thrill. The reveal comes at an extraordinary time in Mortal Kombat's history. It was only in late October when the lukewarm 30th anniversary of the series was announced, complete with a trailer and artwork to mark the occasion. You would think that uh, would have been the perfect time to give fans a taste of what's coming, especially if the 2023 release date is honored, but that hasn't happened. Uh, while Mortal Kombat games usually release in April, it's unlikely that this will be the case with Mortal Kombat 12 due to the sudden and underwhelming fashion in which it was announced. Expect the game, expecting the game uh, near the end of the year makes much more sense with the potential full reveal at E3 2023. I was going to say reveal might be at Evo. Yeah. Evo mode makes sense, especially if Mortal Kombat sense. 11 yeah. is going to be there. Yeah. Uh, this this article doesn't have it, but like literally during the investors call, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslow said, yeah, we got Mortal Kombat 12 on the way. That was it. That's so That's annoying. It. That's, they announced it. That's so it's lame. So, it's so, oh, it's, they they must have like been forced to say that like maybe they didn't have much maybe. else i i've always wanted because like there's a lot going on with like these past few years like what's going on with Warner brothers first at&t buys them and like they're shuffling things around and then the pandemic happened and hbo max was a financial disaster and then they got sold off to discovery and this new guy comes along and he's canceling things left and right mm -hmm. you know canceled back girl Pulled a lot of cartoons off of HBO Max. Pulled Westworld off of HBO Max. Like, doing a lot of things. And all this time, like, the games division is just sitting there unaffected, kind of. Like, there's always that threat that they might get sold off or, like, shut down or whatever. But, like, nothing's really happened to them. Mm -hmm. This is, like, the most acknowledgement the Greater Warner Brothers company has given to, like, their games division. Which is sad that it was literally just, yeah, Mortal Kombat 12 is coming. Yeah. That's... I, I, people know the name Mortal Kombat, yeah. which is why they were probably. This is why it's the only Midway series that they're still keeping afloat, yeah. basically. So that must mean something to them as as yeah. investors. Uh, so that's sad. But I assume at at Evo we're gonna get more information. Yeah, or it could be E three, but I think I think Evo makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next we have Shinji Mikami is leaving Tango Game. Yes. Works. I saw this. This is upsetting. And yeah. it's right after they just released a huge, yeah. really good game. Tango Gameworks founder Shinji Mikami will leave the studio in the coming months. Bethesda Softworks Senior Vice President Todd Vaughn announced in a company-wide email verified by True Achievements. Uh, I am writing today to let you know that studio head Shinji Mikami has decided to leave Tango Gameworks in the coming months, Vaughn said in the email. Mikami-san has been a creative leader and supportive mentor to younger developers at Tango for 12 years through his work on The Evil Within, Ghostwire Tokyo, and of course, Hi-Fi Rush. Mikami, who is best known as the creator of Resident Evil during his 16 years at Capcom, founded Tango Gameworks in March of 2010, uh, and, it, uh, and, it is, and it was acquired by Bethesda Softworks parent company ZeniMax in October that year. At Tango Gameworks, Mikami directed the horror game The Evil Within and served as the executive producer on The Evil Within 2, Ghostwire Tokyo, and the recently launched Hi-Fi Rush. In the email, Vaughn also said that Hi-Fi Rush was one of the most successful launches for Bethesda and Xbox in recent years, and it has generated significant uh, positive momentum for the business and Tango. The official message from Bethesda Softworks is, uh, we can confirm that Shinji Mikami has decided to leave Tango Gameworks in the coming months, we thank him for his work as creative leader and supportive mentor to young developers on uh, the Evil Within franchise, Ghostwire Tokyo, and Hi-Fi Rush. We wish Mikami-san well in his future and are excited by what lies ahead for the talented developers at Tango. Yeah, that's sad. I, yeah. I assume he's 
starting another company or gonna <sighs> yeah i'm jump ship I'm to somebody else i mean maybe because he didn't seem unhappy at tango mm-hmm. part of the reason why he left capcom was because the way they were handling their titles at the time and it doesn't seem like you know there was any like real problems over with bethesda like he was making games he wanted to make so i mean maybe he's wants to go independent again like truly independent do something like less connected to like a corporate structure yeah i don't know that's the only thing i can think of what was uh the woman who worked on ghostwire tokyo I and know. then jumped ship yeah she she got really popular after S- revealing ghostwire tokyo nakamura i think and then she made her own company that yeah. hasn't done anything yet no yeah she she revealed it and then she's like goodbye it's possible that he could go i'm gonna call that that's gonna be my guess he's gonna go not work for her but uh become a partner yeah like maybe part owner or something in in, in that studio that would that might make sense yeah ikumi nakamura Nakamura, yeah yeah and what was the name of her studio was i mean the reveal trailer for the studio was freaking awesome but they haven't done anything yet um unseen unseen Oh yeah, she's worked. She worked on Okami, which no, that was Hideki Kamiya. Never mind. Well, she worked on The Evil Within, The Evil Within Two, yeah. Ghostwire Tokyo. Yeah, but and she's also Bounce. worked at Platinum Games, which Shinji Mikami also worked at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I I think that that yeah. is what's gonna happen. Okay. Anyway, uh, next Hogwarts Legacy best-selling Warner Brothers game. It's the it was like the best-selling game like ever. Yeah, yeah, it broke like a bunch of records. It uh was the highest viewed stream game on like Twitch and yeah. shit. It was insane for a game that nobody wanted to watch or play. Yeah, like in our world. Yeah, everybody hates this fucking game. Yeah, but. Broke all these records yeah. somehow. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy has the Harry Potter nonsense. Hogwarts Legacy has become <laughs> Warner Brothers games' uh, highest earning. Uh, fuck, they, the spell messed me up. Earning eight hundred and fifty <laughs> million dollars in global sales and moving more than twelve million units in just its first two weeks post launch on PS Five and Xbox Series X and S and PC, according to the numbers released Thursday. By the video game company. This stupid article says Hogwarts Legacy has Wingardium Leviosa Warner Brothers I game hate, sales. I hate when <laughs> news articles try to be cute and incorporate lingo from whatever media. Yeah, no, this the, was stupid. The worst is this whenever, was dumb. Whenever, the worst is whenever they do like articles about comic books and they always put onomatopoeia in the headline. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Pow, wham, exactly. zap, yeah. Um, that marks the biggest global launch ever for the Warner Brothers Discovery owned brand uh, with the Harry Potter action role playing game also setting the Twitch record for single player games with 1.28 million peak concurrent views at launch. As Variety previously reported, Hogwarts Legacy opened with stunning player engagement, topping 267 million hours played from launch on February 10th through February 21st. On Thursday, Warner Brothers Games revealed the game had broken company records with a tw- uh, 208, 280 million hours played to date. Per Warner Brothers Discovery, additionally, there has been an increase of global fa- uh, franchise fan engagement overall with Wiz- Wizarding World Digital gathering 300% higher traffic over the normal monthly unique visitor average uh, for the first 10 days of February. Hogwarts Legacy sales figures were released by Warner Brothers Games just ahead of the parent company Warner Brothers Discovery fourth quarter earnings call on Thursday. During the call, CEO David Zaslav touted the impressive returns and noted that the media giants continue to focus on Harry Potter among its other popular IP with plans to take full advantage of these one-of-a-kind franchises. You know, with like every big popular IP, yeah, like you go down the list of popular IPs, I could see why they're popular. Yeah, Harry Potter is the one that makes me feel the most out of touch. I've, I still maintain that like the the Harry Potter about like the, that is popular is, you know, Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone to Deathly Hallows, like that era. Like okay. if you grew up with that era. Like, yes, I understand why that is the biggest thing in the world. But, you know, those people, again, 
are our age. We're aging out of that. Like yeah. new people coming in. Well, like, this game would be the I perfect get, demographic for people our age to right, get back like, into it. Newer, younger people, like Gen Z. Like, are they going to be interested in Harry Potter? Probably not, because J.K. Rowling screwed that up yeah, for everybody. That's a good point. Also, it reminds me a little of Star Wars because, like, uh, well, the, the the original stuff was good. Right. I'm putting air quotes because I watched it and it wasn't, but <laughs> people seem to like it, so I understand. And then they had uh, sequels. Right. And they were bad. Like, like nobody likes Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah no. The, I, I'm trial, equating you the, might. Nobody likes Fantastic. I'm equating that to the prequels. I understand. You know? I, I follow that. Uh, yeah. So we're in kind of the same boat there. But the th to me, like, because at the end of Deathly Hallows, that story ends. Hmm. Like, they defeat Voldemort. They defeat the thing that's been like going on like for the entire yeah. series, the whole overarching threat. And then it cuts to Harry and everybody when he they're older. Yeah. So like they get that is that, a definitive end. They get a happy ending. Even with Star Wars, like yes, they defeat the Emperor and Darth Vader at the end of Jedi, but but they don't show years in the future. If they yeah, showed years in the future, that would have been a well, definitive not only end. That, so not only that, like with Star Wars, you get a sense that there's more out there. I don't know about that. Well, I feel like I only got that sense because we already grew up with the more out well, there. Well, I would argue that we do because Star Wars, you know, every movie takes place desert world, snow world, yeah. industrial world, uh, forest world, cloud world. Harry Potter takes place in a castle. Yeah. <laughs> seven times. Yeah. So, like, the, the whole world, like, th there's interesting stuff in the castle, but there's only so much interesting stuff you can do in a castle yeah. seven times. Yeah, no, you're right. So, like... I just feel like it's it's limited in that scope, in that respect. And, like, the times they've tried to expand on it, Fantastic Beasts, some of the Pottermore crap that's been released, like, it, like nobody cares. Yeah. Like, the only thing people really cared about was that play, The Cursed Child, but that's because it's about Ron, Hermione, and Harry years later. Yeah. You know, it's The Force Awakens, essentially, because it's about their kids and what they do. Yeah. But that, that's a play that's like 10 hours long. <laughs> like, you have to watch it in parts. You break yeah. for lunch in the middle of it. I've, uh, we've talked about this already. I've seen Hogwarts Legacy, and I'm like, I don't I don't get it. I know it's Harry Potter, and people like Harry Potter, but even that, like, I it looks like just generic you bullshit AAA gameplay. I think, gameplay. I think, I think this is... Because, like, people want... People wanted, like, the Harry Potter game. Like, the definitive yeah. one where you can walk around that castle and just, like, do magic stuff in it. Yeah. And, and you make your own guy. Yeah. So it's like you are the magic guy now. Yeah. Uh, so, like, this is I, this is like hitting all of those buttons that yeah. people want. It's a lot like there's, like there's a lot of Star Wars games where if it wasn't Star Wars, I would not be playing. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. It reminds me of Jedi Academy. Yeah. But if Jedi Academy had a more robust character creator. Yeah. And, and, and stuff like that in a yeah. more expansive world. Like, if, if, if they made uh jedi fallen order but you can make the guy yeah like that might be a much bigger deal yeah. i would i would equate this to shadows of the empire on the n64 that game's not that great mm -hmm. but it's star wars yeah and it's pretty good for the time so yeah i, I got fond memories of that game no i i so. i definitely understand that's why people are all over this is because it's it's a mediocre game but it's harry potter and people have been dying to like, be back I in that world like i understand the appeal of it i'm not knocking people who like are playing it and enjoying it mm -hmm. it's not really something we've ever been into i've tried but like i just can yeah. never get over like certain aspects of it um also i guess nobody took my advice and nobody stole the game no, people in the chat said they, they're going to steal it now. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, it made almost a billion dollars. Feel free to steal it. They got enough money. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm of the same... I mean, we've talked about openly wanting to boycott certain things. Yeah. Uh, to me, I just think Harry Potter's stupid. That's, like, <laughs> yeah, the like biggest, the, like, deterrent it, it, it for me the, wanting to play this game. It was the easiest thing for me, like, yeah. just not play. Like, I don't care enough about Harry Potter to... Yeah. But, you know, we've one of the games i think one of the first games we put a foot down on was uh borderlands because yeah. we didn't like the ceo or whatever we didn't like randy pitchford yeah um but 
then every other game company just started falling like dominoes. Every other game company had something wrong with it. Yeah, I mean... So you got to... And, and there's still games every once in a while where I'm like, I don't want to touch that game because I don't like the guy who made it or, yeah. or I don't like this thing associated with that game. This game's got uh, freaking uh, crypto in it. I don't want yeah. that. So like, you got to pick your battles. That's that, that famous, that infamous expression, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. Yeah, that's every, where we're at in video games. Yeah, that's where we're at everywhere. Yeah. Honestly, every company does something that you're going to find gross or repugnant. Yeah. You know, it's just like, how how much of it are you willing to accept like yeah. where like everybody's line is different I, is I, yeah thing. i think it's a personal battle it's whether yeah. or not you want to decide yes this game looks good but i'm gonna abstain because i don't like these ethics or whatever yeah it's not for you to just vomit your like uh, uh, righteousness onto other people yeah. though like don't bully other people out of playing something just yeah, because like, you don't like the company playing a video game doesn't make you a bad person any more than boycotting the video game makes you an ally yeah so yeah that's that's where we're at remember when friggin' all the activision stuff happened and everybody wanted to boycott overwatch 2 and then everybody yeah, played play overwatch, overwatch 2 <laughs> same thing happened with call of duty yeah do you remember back in the day when like the biggest controversy around Call of Duty was no dedicated servers, so everyone was going to boycott it. And then everybody on Steam in the boycott Call of Duty uh, chat was playing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Games were simpler back then. Yeah, I remember that. Like, yeah. dedicated servers was like a big fight people wanted. Yeah. And it ended up not, not really mattering, mattering yeah. because the servers that they had were just fine enough, yeah. you know? So I don't know. Anyway, that's our. Hogwarts Legacy, yeah, debacle. If you like it, great. If not, also great. <laughs> Baldur's Gate three. Do we want to talk about that? Uh, well, real quick, because uh, in a statement to IGN, uh, who's Lorian? Is that who's making Baldur's? Nezumi Gate? Nora says Bob keeps accidentally boycotting games because he straight up isn't interested. In yeah, them. it's true. Uh, as it stands, Lorian has confirmed that the title will launch on PC, G Mac, GeForce Now, and PlayStation 5. The Xbox version of the game is currently in development, but hasn't been officially announced because the studio is struggling to make split-screen co-op work on the Xbox Series X and S. In a statement to IGN, it was said that the encountering issues getting up, getting the feature to work at the same standard on the both the Series X and S, which is a requirement for us to ship. That indicates that the studio is finding it difficult to deliver parity on the Xbox because it needs to ensure that the title can run on both the premium Series X and the more affordable Series S, which isn't as powerful as the bulkier sibling. Of course, uh, Larian wouldn't encounter that issue on the PlayStation 5 because there are, because while there are two different iterations of the console, the main difference is that one includes a disk drive and the other is purely digital. Oh, I just... Original Spiff says it's M1 and M2 native on Mac. You're talking about Baldur's Gate? Because I just noticed it is for Mac. Yeah. That's crazy. That's cool. So yeah, so yeah, the, it's what we said before that Boulder's Gate was coming to PC and PlayStation Five. Right, it is coming to Xbox. They're developing it for Xbox, but they can't get split screen co op working on the Series X and S at the same rate. I think this was in the Xbox showcase. Also, was it? I think so. Um, I need to talk to some game developers about uh the Xbox Series S yeah. bottleneck because I want to know what made microsoft think that it wouldn't be a bottleneck and and is it a scapegoat for these developers because i feel like sometimes it's easy to point the finger at the series s yeah i am i am very curious at that too because it's why would microsoft purposely make a console that would be out of date in like three years yeah, I, I like it says here we have no exclusivity for which platforms we can bring Baldur's Gate three to or when, and we and we'll announce support for additional platforms if we are ready. It, I feel like a developer would opt to just not release on Xbox at that point. Yeah, if the Series S is going to be that big of an issue, yeah, is the is the Xbox market really that big that you're going to develop for a whole another? shitty console you know yeah, like i know i feel like people would just as easily start to shed it like they did with the switch yeah and 
we're not really seeing games abstaining from Xbox, really. No. Are we? No, most, most if not all, third-party games are still coming to both Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't... It is very... Especially because, like, game development between systems is a lot more uniform now because they all run an x86 architecture Mm -hmm. same as pc pc games are infinitely scalable you can go all the way down to 720p you can go all the way up to like 8k yeah now so it stands to reason that they could make a shrunk down version of Baldur's gate 3 to run on the series s and then scale it up for the series x unless you can like you send one skew to xbox not two different skews well, it sounds like they're starting with like around PlayStation 5 specs. Right. You know? And Series X specs. And then they have to scale back for the Series S. But when normally when you develop for a, a multi platform game, you develop uh what's known as the lowest common factor, like the the yeah. weakest system and then scale up from there. This would be the Series S. But they have to Yeah, you're right. But they have to target what they think that this game is gonna look best at. Right. You know? And uh, starting with the weakest link is just is is just gonna make your foundation shitty, you know. Well, yeah, but like, what aside from like resolution, what what can't the series S do? That's what I'm thinking about. Because yeah. like, uh, when Xbox pitched it, they said it's gonna be the exact same. It's just different resolution, which is why it will be able to sell for cheaper and be lower power yeah. because the resolution will be different. But I feel like maybe these games just aren't hitting resolution targets, and that's not the spec anymore. Yeah. Like if Boulder is Boulder's Gate going to be 4K on Xbox Series S I, or Xbox Series X? Because then it I has to be 1440p so. on Xbox Series S. Why not just make it 1080 then? Yeah. But then there's obviously some other stuff mm-hmm. that is bottlenecking it. So according to Xbox's official website, um, te- uh, the processor is a big difference. The Series X has a 12 teraflops of processing power while the Series S only has four. Mm-hmm. So that right there is a huge difference. I think, doesn't the Xbox One X have more teraflops than the Series yes. S? Yes, the Xbox One X was higher spec. However, it was a different architecture. Yes. So, so when you consider all of the specs, the Series S was yeah. more powerful. But the Series X on paper looked more powerful. So yeah, other than that, and like the storage capacity, like everything else is more or less compatible yeah that's why i want to talk to somebody who develops specifically for microsoft yeah or something so i can learn more about that cpu both have a eight core amd custom zen 2 cpu oh the series x is a 3.8 gigahertz the series s is 3.6 the gpu uh, the Series X is 1.825 gigahertz, mm-hmm. 12 teraflops. Series S is 1.565 with four teraflops. When this all came out, we assumed that there would be a time when they would shed the Series S, where they would just be like, forget it. <sighs> Which, I mean, the Series S was supposed to be like, I guess because the, ser- they, the Series S is that Game Pass machine. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be the cloud gaming That's device. true. It could turn into a cloud gaming Yeah. Thing. Yeah. But at that point, then then they got to lower the price. They got to, like, I, I forgot what Phil Spencer said. Like, 125 is, like, the sweet spot. For that set-top box they were yeah. wanting to do that they canceled because it was too expensive. Like, then they have to sell it for that. And it's still too ex- too expensive to sell for $125. I, I'm still, I, I, I st- still think it'd be really cool if they release a, a set-top box. Yeah. Thing. I still think, I still think there's potential for a handheld. Well, I mean... <sighs> They've never done it before. Right. I think they're they're pushing cloud gaming more than anything, or like their third party. But there's all these cloud gaming devices coming out. Why right. not just have one, an official Xbox? One? Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on quick. Call of Duty's not taking. They're making a game apparently. Yes. Says who? Uh, says 
Well, that's the same article. Bloomberg says it'll have a single-player campaign and new multiplayer maps. Why do you keep opening up the game developer? Here, do that. There you go. First try. Uh, instead of skipping a year, Activision's Call of Duty franchise will get a full price standalone video game this fall, Bloomberg reports, but it'll be a continuation of last year's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. What? Uh, Bloomberg, Jason Schreier noted in Thursday's report that Activision's plan uh, for the series originally called for a premium expansion to Modern Warfare 2 rather than a full new game sometime in 2023. This goes back to 2020 when development difficulties moved Treyarch's Call of Duty, uh, move, uh, sorry, moved Treyarch's turn in Call of Duty's three-year studio rotation up a year and brought us Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War a year ahead of schedule. Activision-owned Treyarch, Infinity War, and Sledgehammer Games had split production on the series on a three-year development cycle going back to 2014's Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Because of that workload hiccup, Activision at first planned to go through 2023 without a mainline Call of Duty entry pushing Treyarch's next regularly scheduled Call of Duty to 2024. The paid expansion envisioned for Modern Warfare 2 instead was a premium Call of Duty. Uh, sorry, the paid expansion envisioned for Modern Warfare 2 is instead a premium Call of Duty game now, according to an Activision spokesperson with a single player campaign and new multiplayer maps. Uh, the Call of Duty franchise will observe its 20th anniversary this year. Infinity War, Treyarch, Sledgehammer, and Activision on a whole are in the envelope are are in the envelope in a say oh, they're talking about the microsoft sale i'm surprised why did they does that mean they split up the story of modern warfare 2 no i think they're just they're just gonna make a full game now but they said it's a continuation of modern warfare 2 the, right i think i think the original plan was just to do premium dlc right but instead they're doing a full 70 dollar retail release yeah, which, that is a continuation means, of Modern Warfare so 2. So it's probably gonna, just going to be like Call of Duty 2.5. Yeah, that's weird. It is weird. That that's they're gonna, very strange. And they're going to do it within a year. I was trying to look up the story. I was trying to look up cutscenes of the story between Modern Warfare, the old ones and the new ones. Yeah. Because there's a little bit of difference. Um, there's a lot of difference. I couldn't tell where this one ended <laughs> compared to the last, the, yeah. the old one. Um. I was very confused by everything. <laughs> yeah, no. It's... Because there's also, like, the old one's not that old. And no. um, they have, like, 4K PC versions of, like, the old one. Yeah, there's remasters That still look of the old really one good, that, yeah. yeah. So it's very confusing what yeah. even this is. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's very weird that, like, you know, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1 and 2 are, like, the most popular Call of Duty games of all time. Yeah. So he, you just, you basically said, let's do that again. Yeah. This is honestly worse than the Resident Evil <laughs> War remake. I will say, I like uh, Warzone 2 a little more than I did. Uh, yeah. I played it like a week ago and I had more fun. Um, apparently, it's still not out on mobile. Call of Duty Warzone, I think, yeah. is the original Warzone coming for mobile and it's still not out yet. Um, I went to a trivia night last week with my friends, and one of the questions was, uh, in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, what country invades the United States? I knew it. It was Russia. Yeah, I was going to say it's Russia. But but someone asked, and I should have I should have asked this too, someone asked, the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 uh, or the old Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2? Isn't it still Russia? No. Oh. I don't think Russia invades the U.S. in the new one. Oh. I think you in, like the U.S. invades Mexico. <laughs> Oh, what the hell? Yeah, because I remember I I didn't play the new Modern Warfare two, but I remember reading a lot of articles about how there's like very gross, um, stuff happening at the border of the U S and Mexico that like you're forced to do. Yeah. So, interesting. Yeah. Um, how did you do in trivia night? Uh, I did pretty well. I'd imagine yeah. you would. It's the problem is it's like it's not a lot of pop culture trivia. It's a lot of like weird stuff. Okay. Like one of the things was like according to Australia. Um, what are two of the ten most popular names for girl dogs? Like, how is anyone <laughs> supposed to know that? Yeah. So random stuff like that, but that's annoying. Yeah. Uh, Mary movie coming out early. Yeah, wow, it's I didn't coming see out two days early. It's coming out April fifth instead of April seventh. Uh, that is cool. That's weird. What I, day is April fifth? 
I think that's a Wednesday. Um, it, it's that is a Wednesday. Coming out April 5th in the U.S. and in more than 60 markets around the world. The movie hits theaters in additional markets in April and May, with Japan opening in April 26th. 28th. 28th. Uh, uh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Why is it coming later to Mario's home country? I don't know, because I thought maybe like voiceovers and stuff, but they're probably not doing voiceovers. Mm. They probably want Chris Pratt. Yeah. Uh, interesting. I, I, it's very strange that it's coming two days early. A lot of movies do that, though. Like, they'll announce, like, hey, we're coming two days early. They want to get just, like, a little bit more of that, like, weekend box office. I hope nobody bought tickets yet. <laughs> Damn. I didn't. Uh, okay. Also, Miyamoto on Nintendo after he retires. Oh, no. Uh, in an interview with NPR, Shigeru Miyamoto was asked what uh, about what Nintendo will be like when he's gone. But it, in his view, he doesn't think much will change. Miyamoto explained to the outlet that many people within the company, including those who work on Mario games, all have this sense of what it means to be Nintendo. He also pointed out how many new ideas often have an essence of Nintendo. His full words. You know, I really feel like it's not going to change. It's probably going to be the same. That's There's, you know, people who are on the creative team, uh, people on the executive team, creators within the company, and also people who create Mario, and they all have this sense of what it means to be Nintendo. It also... And so it's not like there's a lot of different opinions that go back and forth. Everyone has an understanding. This is kind of a shared understanding of what it is to be Nintendo. And so even when there's new ideas that come up, there's always the fact that it's new idea, that it's a new idea, but also the fact that is it uh, this, this. But is also saying, the fact is it. But also the fact that is it a new idea that really has the essence of Nintendo or that's, not? Yeah. And I think that's something that you know. We have this incredible shared vision, almost a little scary shared vision about this. So I think there won't, it's not going to change. It's it's that he's talking like a normal person. Right. And they wrote it down. So there's going to be like skips in the in After the, the fourth dialogue. or fifth time he said ideas, it just broke me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, is 70 years old. But uh, before he settles into his creative fellow role, um, there are... There was much to talk of the potential retirement. However, he's still quite hands-on, especially with the Super Mario Brothers movie and Super Nintendo World. Yeah, he went to the opening. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah. Good on him. We'll we'll have him for, yeah. for a little while longer. I mean, I mean, like, there's Walt Disney. He's been dead a long time. There's Stan Lee. He's gone now a couple of years. He's like the next one. Like the one, the one, the one car, the one person. In their fields, who created like the most iconic characters in their medium, like yeah. it's Walt Disney, Stanley, and him. Yep. So, all right. Next, Xbox boss now downplaying importance of merger. Yes. Where's the quote? Uh, let's find it. Talking to British uh, paper, The Times, over the weekend, Spencer pointed out how the real reason, according to him and Xbox, that the company is trying to buy up Activision Blizzard King. Noting that it wasn't to snap of Call of Duty or keep it off other platforms. Instead, he, he said that the main purpose behind the deal is to help Microsoft catch up in the mobile market and eventually become a true competitor to Google and Apple's mobile stores. He admitted that this is possible. This is a possible future was a long way from today. But what if this proposed deal and the plans to make Xbox a true player in the mobile space fall apart? Spencer suggested everything would be fine, even if he admitted this was an important acquisition for Xbox. Um, it's not some linchpin to some long term. It's not some linchpin to the long term. Xbox will exist if the deal doesn't go through. Uh, Spencer said. Uh, hold on. Uh, of course, this is true, but it does seem odd that after a year of emphasizing how dauntingly massive Sony and Nintendo's combined market share is, and continuing to say that consuming Activision would be would make Xbox competitive and stronger, Spencer is now out there going, well, we don't really need them. Good if it happens, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I so, guess they're prepared for a world where it doesn't go through. Yeah, because I mean, they are coming up against a lot of, like, resistance, especially yeah. in the UK and in Europe. So, I mean, we've talked about it before. Like, since the beginning, Phil Spencer has said that the real reason behind this acquisition was to King. So they yeah. can get, acquire King mobile game studio so that they can have a, a stronger footprint in the mobile gaming space they do need that yes that is they, they they do not have that yeah um 
I mean, maybe that is why they've been so open about putting Call of Duty on other platforms to like really show that it, it is King that they care about mm-hmm. more than anything else. I still think it's weird. I still think it's bizarre they didn't just buy King yeah. from Activision. I mean, I'm sure the acquisition of Activision Blizzard King, because it came out like within months of like the original like scandals at Activision. So I'm sure that like accelerated That's things. what I'm thinking. Like they wanted King and then they, and then Activision was like, no, he can't just give up King. And then all that shit happened and probably the entire video game industry did not like Bobby Kotick. Yeah. And Microsoft was like, we're in a position to do something about that. Yeah, and then they we, did. We'll just take the whole company. Yeah. Just take it right out from under you. Yeah. So. All right. Last thing. Angry Birds. Remember them. <laughs> They're getting rid of the game, but not. I'm going to just read what Rovio said. Okay. They tweeted in what looks like them being canceled. Yeah. Uh, we have reviewed the business case of Rovio Classics Angry Birds. And due to the game's impact on our wider games portfolio, we have decided that Rovio Classics Angry Birds will be unlisted from the Google Play Store on Thursday, February 23rd. Additionally, the game will be renamed to Red's First Flight in the App Store pending further review. Rovio Classics Angry Birds will remain playable on devices on which the game has been downloaded, even after it has been unlisted. We understand that this is sad news for many fans, as well as the team has ha- as well as the team that has worked hard to make Rovio Classics Angry Birds a reality. We are extremely grateful to the Angry Birds fans who have shown their love of the brand and the game from the beginning. We hope those fans can continue to bring that passion to our live Angry Birds slingshot games, such as Angry Birds 2, Angry Birds Friends, and Angry Birds Journey, where our goal every day is to craft the best possible experience for players. Angry uh, Rovio Classics Angry Birds is a pay once, get the whole game. Yeah. yeah. Everything else is a free to play with microtransactions. So does that so, mean... So by impacting their portfolio, they mean they're not making enough money off of Right. So when they delist it and relist it as Red's First Flight, is that free to play? Actually, didn't that means they did that already. Uh, we will be renaming Red First Flight. I, I have it on Apple. Red's First Flight is a dollar. Okay. Well, this is um, they're specifically talking about the Google Play Store. Oh, uh, I I just did that on the iTunes App Store, and it came up British, the British App Store for some reason. Interesting. It was a year a pound. It's a light, uh, there's a light bird, huh? First, but there's like red's not the only bird in Angry Birds. It is not. I'm getting a lot of like airplane stuff. It says the game will be renamed to Red's First Flight in the App Store. So I guess that just means yeah, iTunes. Um, I'm getting Angry Birds Two, Angry Birds Friends, Angry Birds Journey. Angry Birds Transformers. So I understand where they're coming from because they have a big IP right now. And yeah. the only thing anybody wants to play is the first game. Right. And it was it was fucking probably a dollar or two. Yeah. And you got everything all there and it's good. And you think about Angry Birds, you see the movie somewhere and you're like, oh, I want to try out this Angry Birds game. I've heard about Angry Birds. Yeah. You're going to keep getting the first game, not the newest hotness that they're trying to push. Yeah. So they tried things like calling it rovio classics angry birds mm-hmm. so that it shows people that this is the old one you don't want that you want the new one yeah but uh that didn't work so they're delisting it completely or changing the name completely and trying to push on you the free to play stuff yeah because i guess that's what the new business model is yeah so i think there's probably better ways to go about that. Uh, absolutely like I mean- uh i mean renaming it to red's first flight i don't think is that bad that that kind of makes a little bit of sense does it though because like everybody knows it as angry birds yeah like angry birds has been around for how long and like now all of a sudden the original game is going to be called something different i think the move is just rovio classics angry birds and then you download the game and you play it and it goes hey you want to try the new one like right when you open the game it should be like here's the new one here's a discount to four free eggs or whatever the fuck the the microtransactions are um removing an option for people uh is terrible i don't know why they're doing it for the google play store specifically it seems like it's going to be still be available for itunes yeah. but not on the google play store that's dumb yeah what a world we live in angry birds what a what a whirlwind franchise that's been
Hey, it's this time now. Oh. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! This is from Danny Trejo. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Hashtag Pokemon Day, and it's his head severed on top of a turtle. You don't know what that's a reference to. Desperado. Nope. What is it? Breaking Bad. It was, there was a character on Breaking Bad called Tortuga, and they cut his head off and put it on a turtle. I've seen that before. I've yeah. seen his head on a turtle yeah, before. I, did, Bre- I didn't know Breaking what it was Bad. from. Breaking Bad is one of those shows that, like, you, you hear everybody talk about, like, oh, it's the greatest show ever, and, like, you think it's overhyped and overrated. But then you watch it, and you're, like, you're upset because they're right. <laughs> it is great. It is fantastic. You know, I've seen clips on YouTube. It's pretty good. Yeah. No, it <laughs> genuinely is. And, like, part of you is like, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to fucking break it bad. How good can it be? And you sit there and you're like, fuck, this is incredible television. Also, uh, I've seen the last episode and that's it. That, it yeah. was a great last episode. It was a very good last episode. Two uh, episodes before that is probably the best episode of the whole series, though. Okay. Directed by, uh, what's his name? Ryan Johnson, the guy who made Star Wars great. <laughs> but you know, guys don't appreciate that. Uh, last week's Wolf Den Podcast. Oh, yeah. If, oh, if we're on the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you left a comment over there, we might read it right now, just like Jace did. Uh, Will, what do you think about all the DCU movie news? Excited for, excited or concerned? I just hope we see most of these movies on, like, the past DC movie slate. I think, okay, so... Like the DC, like people have to just accept the fact that the DC movies since Man of Steel, it's been messy. It's just has been, you know, they had, they rushed to create a cinematic universe and you know, this, the Snyder era, we'll call it like was messy and it didn't really work. People didn't really like it. Then the next era, the Walter Hamada era was also messy and confusing and people liked it better but not really so like it it was in dire need of like a refresh and like a like a standardization and we finally have it it seems like we finally have it at least you know i like james gunn a lot he has proven himself to be not only a fan of this stuff but he understands comic books and superheroes um so i think it's in good hands i find the the selection of movies he's uh picked to and tv shows to like start this whole thing interesting because the movies it's like swamp thing and superman and uh the brave and the bold and the tv shows it's like green lanterns and amanda waller and the creature commando so it's like this weird mix of like top tier stuff and like b level and c level stuff which you would think you might want to just do all a level stuff but you know whatever so i'm interested to see where it goes i'm not gonna like rush out to see everything immediately Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna i'm just gonna sit back see where it takes us all i know is like i think everything's in good hands we'll see i mean when they announced like the early marvel movies we were pretty confused too there was a lot of like b-level stuff and that turned into like well i mean incredible stuff well like the first round was like iron man captain america and thor like Mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things like even like back then, you think that makes sense. Those are like the big Marvel characters that they owned. Mm-hmm. And then the next round, we got the Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant Man, which was like a little weird, but okay. And then the next round, they got progressively weirder with like Doctor Strange. Yeah. Uh, and then that, well, well like now is a whole different story. But like, now it's wacky and weird. Yeah. Now it's like nobody's really happy with the Marvel <laughs> yeah. movies right now. Yeah, I've completely well, dropped off. I, I'm so disappointed. They look good. I mean, they. I, I look. They, it looks like I would like Ant Man, but uh, um, I don't. I don't think I would like Ant Man. Apparently, nobody likes Ant Man, right oh, which okay. sucks because I've been championing the Ant Man movie since the first one. I'm the one who's saying like the Ant Man movies are good. You're all the idiots, <laughs> and now they tried to make Ant Man like all the Avengers movies, and then it ruined it. Yeah, the whole appeal of Ant Man, or well, part of the appeal at least, is like to see like normal things big. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being big world in mario like yeah. oh it's ant like it's a bathtub but it's a big bathtub you know <laughs> and when you go into the quantum realm like you don't know what anything looks like yeah. you have nothing to compare it to in the real world like yeah. oh it's a tower but it's a big tower like that's a sci-fi tower yeah so i don't know i'll see it when it comes on disney plus i am caught up with finally with all the marvel stuff black panther wakanda forever is very good thor love and thunder is pretty bad 
Okay, it's, that's upsetting. It is upsetting. And what's upsetting too is like at the halfway point of the movie, suddenly it becomes better. But like the beginning, like is, Solo. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> the beginning of Solo was bad, and then halfway through it got good all of a sudden. Not it, not as dramatic. Like Solo is still a better movie than this. Overall. Okay. And the worst part about it is Christian Bale, the poor man, is in a completely different movie. And he's incredible. <laughs> Oh my God! You were like you feel so bad for him because he's giving it all. He is incredible, but he is not in the same movie as everybody else. <laughs> all right, no- Knowles Dean says you guys are too young to know what good NES games are. You're judging them versus everything after eight bit. I'm thirty five. <laughs> how, how is that too young? For it's NES. We grew up with an NES. Yes, and. Uh, we had the best games on it. We yeah, we grew up with Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers Three. Yeah, and Ninja Gaiden, and Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden Two, and Mega Man Three. Yeah, and Back, Back to, the, to Future. the Future. Yeah, <laughs> which we knew even then the was not, not right. good. Um, there's not a lot of good NES games. Sorry, there's not. There's not a lot of good. I I, I do feel like video I, games haven't found their foothold. Maybe yet. if we were even like five years older we would like appreciate it more and find like the nuance and art to it. There are a lot of NES games I do like, but I do recognize that it is like, you know, black and white films are cool, but like when we got color films and color films are so much better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hey, the Ms. I'm sorry, but a list in an audio podcast is very boring to listen to. Well, I'm sorry. Sorry. It's just one episode. Yeah, it's just one episode. You'll be fine. Mega Dragon says, Dry Newsweek. Bob, time to break out the old faithful. Opens it to your list. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Banana Bear Game says, I'm going to use this episode as an excuse to voice my hatred towards Chrono Trigger <laughs> not being in the SNES games. It's amazing how Square Enix just refuses to acknowledge its existence. Also, a good couple... A good couple would be Nathan and Ellen from Uncharted. Elena. Elena from Uncharted. A bit rocky, but definitely my favorite. Yeah, I uh, guess she's a big part of it, right? I only ever played three and four. She, and she's not really in those. She's right? a big part of one. Right. Like she's the main like the second main character in one. Two, she kinda like disappears and comes back. Same thing in three. Like like yeah, they eventually get married in four, but like, you know, Drake kinda like lies to her and goes yeah. off adventuring with his brother yeah you don't see any like chemistry ruins, really ruins their relationship i don't know they always elena kind of always felt like she kept coming back because like she, because she had to yeah not because she was like a part of drake's life mm-hmm. essentially so in terms of square enix not acknowledging chrono trigger I don't think that could be a rights thing. No, they own Chrono Trigger, Lock, Stock, and Barrel. It's been on PlayStation a couple of times. I mean, that not being on Switch Online is goes to the greater question of like a lot of third parties aren't putting their stuff on Switch Online. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, th- I don't think Chrono Trigger is available on Switch at all. But like, that's a game like Square would just release it on Switch, and they've re-released yeah. Chrono Trigger a bunch. Square like, would history. be uh, a Chrono Trigger. Why don't they revisit that franchise if it's such a big deal? There's two games. There's Chrono Trigger, which is the original, and Chrono Cross on the PlayStation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are the only two. But, like, Chrono Trigger, like, they, there's a DS version of Chrono Trigger that's apparently the definitive version of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could just re-release that. All right, now we're in the chat. Well, also, I, we got to thank uh, Original oh, Spiff yes. for the 13 months. Blam! Made it in time to catch <laughs> the, the at least the end. Thanks for blaming Yeah. Me. Holy Lettuce says, did you guys see the Elden Ring DLC was announced, but now in development? I know it's not really your style of game, but I'm excited. Seems like it wouldn't get a DLC if it didn't do as well as it did. Not sure if y'all mentioned it. We didn't. We didn't. Um, I forgot about it, honestly. Yeah. What can you do with that game? Like, what can you add to it? More bosses, I guess. That's really it. Yeah. Uh, No, I'm sure that that's going to do really well. Yeah. So, Bob, according to Dynaminers... According to Eurogamer, Dynamite has discovered secret bonus points are given out in Mario Kart Super Circuit for everyone except Yoshi. The fuck does that mean? Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? Everyone loves Yoshi. Secret bonus points. Okay. 
I pick yeah. Yoshi sometimes. Well, don't pick him because he's not getting bonus points. Uh, Super Mario Broth, which is a Twitter account I, fo- I f- Twitter account that I follow. In Mario Kart Super Circuit, the Grand Prix rank is calculated with a complex formula that awards points for players' performance. However, the formula also gives free bonus points simply for playing as certain characters, with Bowser getting the most and Yoshi getting none. So I think that just proves that Mario Kart is unfair. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> Bowser, I guess, because he's the slowest. Yeah. And they need to even it out a little bit. And Toad's the fastest. But why is Yoshi not getting any? Yeah, that's strange. To achieve the triple star ranking, the player must achieve 330 skill points. This means that simply by choosing Bowser, the player is already 13.6% of the way to getting that rank before the race has even started. A player choosing Yoshi must play much better than one choosing Bowser to achieve the same ranking. Okay. Game's also hard as hell to control. It's not, yeah. a, not, a, it's not a good game. Um, when's the next will appearance on the Nintendo podcast? Good we gotta question. Talk about that, I want to do right. another game. Yeah, so that was good. Let me know. I gotta. I had started writing questions and I stopped. Oh, good. But like, I have next time is gonna have a specific theme. Okay. So I, I we we gotta do it with like a game show set with like a podium and yeah. stuff. We gotta, we gotta figure, figure that, that out. Um, are you guys ever going to have guests on here again, or is that? reserved for the nintendo podcast uh we when we relaunched this podcast we wanted to have a lot of guests yeah and then i just got lazy <laughs> i am gonna take a week off in june so you'll have okay. a guest then i will have a guest so in wait june. for the end of june <laughs> um or i'll take off too there you go i could do that uh anyway when's the next what bob got wrong uh f- I got to start watching the Nintendo again. I, my- I'm never wrong anymore. I've learned all my <laughs> lessons. Uh, uh, we are doing a... Uh, this is a spoiler for the Nintendo podcast. It, not this week, but the week after. Hannah made like this uh, card game type thing. Uh, you ever heard of Super Fight? Yeah. It's that, but she made it like video game characters, oh. which is pretty good. That is cool. It was pretty cool. You basically just argue about why your guy would win. First guy I got, Kirby, mm. which is the end yeah. for anyone. <laughs> got any wacky streams coming up this week? Uh, I want to stream with my espresso machine, but I need the tamper, so I don't mm. know. Just Amazon over a tamper. Hopefully it's same day the, delivery. But the problem is... Oh, you do you have to go to a coffee store? And no, like, no, 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 no. I don't want to waste my money on a shitty one. Okay, for no reason. I got a good one, and I got it expedited. Yeah, but it's still coming from China. Oh, so I, I, I gotta wait for it. So why don't you just buy like like tamper? It's just basically like a thing that like pushes down. Yeah. Okay. So it why- has to be exactly fifty eight point five millimeters. Okay, so why don't you just buy a cheap one? Because then I'm wasting money. Like a two, I want, I a just, two dollar tamper while you I, wait for your sixty dollar one. They're they're like at cheapest ten dollars. Okay, that's I feel like that's a rip off. I got a forty five. <laughs> no, I got I got a forty dollar one and then paid twenty dollars for expedited shipping. I sixty dollars, just like <laughs> I said. <laughs> this one's cooler. It has a spring in it, so you always oh, okay. you always do the same amount of force. Uh, I'm excited to see this espresso machine in action. Oh my so God, am I. These are expensive. Oh, oh here I, you go. Uh, seven fifty. I got a Normcore one. Normcore, yeah, yeah forty three dollars. That's the one. Except that this one's one. That one's black. I got it in white, and I had to get it from the Normcore website. I'm a little it's pissed. Right here, you I, just I'm a little it's in black. Um, it's in black. I wanted white. I'm a little pissed off at Normcore because they had a cool pitcher and I uh-huh. got it, and it has a little like a, a little in the spout right where the milk pours out. It's like a little fucked up. Really, it's not smooth. Oh. I'm a little mad at them. Uh, also, my 3D printer is not Wi-Fi. Oh, that sucks. You can get a Wi-Fi like car. It's all yeah. open source bullshit. Uh-huh. So they have a, a Wi-Fi card that is basically for an Arduino. Uh-huh. The website that I bought that from sells the 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 Wi-Fi card for six dollars. Okay. The shipping was twenty five. Oh. So I found the same card on Amazon uh-huh. three for six dollars. Okay. And I was like, that's a waste because I don't need three. I only need one. 
found it on another website, a dollar fifty free shipping. <laughs> just some random website. So I ordered it there. Dollar fifty, I'm getting a Wi Fi cord. How big do you need your tamper to be? Fifty eight millimeters. Fifty eight point five, basically. Oh, so this is fifty eight. Yeah, it's it's two side. It's fifty one and fifty eight. I and, would probably work. And it's uh, eight bucks. You can have it here by Friday. I'm probably get, you know, I probably have it coming any minute now, unless it <laughs> accidentally shows up at my fucking parents' house. Which it could. What kind of printer did you get? It's called a Prusa Mini. <laughs> it's over there. It's orange. What's cool about that is all the, you see the orange parts on it? Yeah. And some of the black parts, but the orange parts are 3D printed. So oh. they have Prusa's 3D printing Prusa's. Cool. <laughs> And they have Bob at home 3D printing Zelda's titties. Big, big titty Zelda. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, a youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us, Rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Should I raid Wood or is he going to be mad that uh, he's, that he's uh, not that here? He's, no. Uh, every time I've raided him the past couple times, he he stops streaming. It looks like he's playing a game. Uh, we're going to raid right. Wood. Okay. Uh, he's. I played this game with him last night. Uh, after the fall, it's a PSVR game, mm. or it's just a VR game. He plays this game all of the time, apparently. Okay. Uh, and it was pretty good. It's it's best. It's Left 4 Dead. Ah, it's another Left 4 Dead game, but this time in VR. Ooh. I, I'm uh stalling a little bit because I'm trying to see where my norm core tamper is, and I don't have any email updates or anything. Oh. So never mind. I'll find that out later. Thanks for watching, guys. Go watch Wood. I'll see you maybe tomorrow. Definitely Thursday. Uh, Bye. Bye. Whoops.